and a little more closer to the child. Uh, every teacher, knowingly or unknowingly, has a style of teaching. She has an approach to teaching. And this approach to teaching, usually you may not realize. Some do. Some do it intentionally. Some do it as they were taught. And some do it unknowingly. Uh, but if you are in my age group, most of you are much younger to me, but if you are in my age group, most of us belong to a time when we were always instructed that bade jo bolte hain, wo sahi hai. we are elder to you, what we tell you, that is right, so you listen to us. So we people, when we took up teaching as a career, uh, maybe unknowingly, we used to use the teacher-centric approach. What is this teacher-centric approach? I am being very simple in my language so that I can just share with you what I want to. This teacher-centric approach is an approach where you are the Lord, God and Master of your class. You are the ultimate authority. You decide the timing. You decide the delivery of the lecture. You decide the topic. You ask questions. You answer them. You are unhappy with the student. You ask him to leave. You are happy with the student. You appreciate. You are not fond of a student. You do not appreciate. So ultimately, it is you, you, you and you all the way. So in those 40-45 minutes... All over the place, it's you. The student is a mere recipient. He is secondary in the classroom. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, the modern method of teaching has changed in leaps and bounds. All over the world, currently, they believe in a student-centric method of teaching. So, you know, things have really changed in the last few years. And we people in India have to buck up. Many of you must be already using this approach to teaching as a student-centric approach. Many may not. Uh, so therefore, the modern method of teaching has shifted to the student being the hero of the class. The class rotates around the student. The activity is performed by the student. It is the student who controls the class more or less. They have a group participating in the activity. They interact with each other. They help each other. They work on their mistakes. They improve on the drawbacks. They try to put forward some activity which will be helpful to the rest of the class to understand the topic. So it's the student, student, student all the way. And the teacher is a mere facilitator. She or he is just a person who ensures there is discipline in the class. There is no untoward incident. The materials required for any activity are provided properly to the students. And the students are able to achieve the learning outcome. The learning is done which the teacher had aimed at as an objective in her class. So she is a mere facilitator in this uh, mode of uh, teaching. Uh, now talking about, uh, I want to share with you some personal life experiences just to let you know how uh, this art integration is really something very interesting in your classes. Uh, before I go into those personal experiences, I would also like to mention that how would you uh, go about an art integrated class in a simple way. Say, for example, uh, to, to, tomorrow morning you entered your classroom and you just uh, ask the students, any one of them, to draw something. Uh, maybe it had not just talking about classes 11 and 12, it would also apply to the other classes. You enter the class and you ask the student, uh, could you kindly mute your uh, system, please? Uh, Parikrama, ma'am, could you please help yes, us by mute? Could you kindly mute your system, please? Yes, ma'am. Could you kindly mute your system? Sound. Your sound is yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, therefore, uh, you could just enter the classroom and you could ask a student to draw something on the board explaining what you understood the last day. So, something he has to draw on the board which could explain what he understood last day. That's art integration. And let me tell you, that makes the class clearer, simpler. So, drawing in the class is art integration in the classroom, which most of our biology teachers, we do that. Coming to the next aspect, provide hands-on learning. Now, what is this hands-on learning? Do some craft work in the class. Let them make something out of some material provided in the class. Providing opportunities to students to learn from each other. Such classes help in engaging students in reflecting about what they have learned, how they have learned, and what it means to them. Using student assessment of their own and peers' work as part of the learning experiences. Providing opportunities to students to revise and improve their work and share it with others. Building a positive classroom environment is something very important which happens in an art integrated class. So the building of a positive classroom environment 
where students are encouraged and supported to take risks, explore possibilities, and where a social, cooperative learning community is created and nurtured. So all this happens in art-integrated classes. Now coming to some of my personal experiences, which have helped us, in fact helped me, integrate more of art in my classes. Uh, in fact, it goes beyond the initial step of helping the student learn and recall information to challenging students to take the information and facts they have learned and do something with them to build deeper understanding. In the words of Stevenson and Deasy, 2005, in the words of Stevenson and Deasy, 2005, in the arts, students have central and active roles as meaning makers. This role demands that they not only acquire knowledge, but they develop the capacity to reflect on what they are learning and to use it as they interpret and create works of art. Uh, I have a colleague in my school, Mr. Parthoprotim Roy. He is the head of uh, the uh, physics department. And there was a very interesting incident that took place, which he shared with me and I'm sharing it with you, which really rang a bell in my mind. His son was very fortunate to get a chance to uh, pursue his PhD program in a university in United States last year. So he left for United States last year and I'm sharing with you his first day interaction with his professor in the university campus. So he entered the campus in the morning, the first working day, and he uh, went to meet the professor under whom he would pursue his PhD program. Now I'm telling you what happened the first day when he met the professor. He met the professor, this boy's name was Tito Roy. And when he met the professor, the professor greeted him for a while, patted his back, and uh, gave him a bunch of, please listen to the incident, it's very interesting, gave him a bunch of old keys. Old keys were given to him. I think all of us can switch on our videos for a while because this is the time we, you know, get to see each other. And seeing human beings now is rare. So let's see each other in good form and enjoy the, uh, you know, webinar. Yeah, thank you so much. You're all young, pretty faces. So it's nice to see you people across. So uh, I'm telling you this incident where the uh, professor handed over a bunch of old keys to this young student. So the student was taken aback and he was not very happy with this idea of old bunch of keys, you know. His day starting in the university, first time in the new country, which all of us dream of visiting someday. And he was handed over a bunch of old keys. So he looked at the professor with a blank look and the professor said that you meet me after an hour at this particular spot in the campus. So the student did the same thing. But in that one hour, he was so upset. He called his father back in India. And he told him about the incident. He said, I don't know what's going on. They are giving me an old bunch of keys. I think they won't keep me long in this campus. They are trying to get rid of me and so on and so forth. The father pepped him up and said, let's see what happens. Let me know what happened after you met the professor. So he met the professor at the destined spot. And the two of them took a walk to a particular region of the campus. That particular region of the campus was very green, full of trees, a little ghastly. And in between the trees, this boy could see a very old warehouse. There was a very old warehouse in that part of the university campus. And the professor walked towards the entry door of that warehouse. When they reached the door, uh, this uh, when the boy, Tito Roy, saw the door, the door was very dusty and old. It seemed no one had entered that warehouse in the last couple of years. So the professor asked him to unlock the doors. And there were so many keys. He tried a few and ultimately he was successful. They entered and there was a huge switchboard with uh, too many switches didn't know what to do. There was some with the written light and uh, fan or something like that. He switched on a few, not working. Another few were working. So a few lights were there. And as soon as the lights were switched on, he saw a huge collection of machinery, machine pieces, huge machine pieces lying there. And he, you know, he was a little apprehensive as to what was being done to him. So he asked the professor, he said, sir, now what do I do with this? The prof was a person who spoke less. He told him, he said, this is an air conditioning plant which the university bought a few years ago to cool a certain section of the campus. But the plant failed to work after a couple of months. It is lying in a non-working condition. Your job is to rectify this whole plant in the next two and a half months. So I'm giving you two and a half months time. You come here every day, rectify this whole plant, make it work and see me after you have done the job. And he just left the warehouse and went back. The boy was left alone in the warehouse with this bunch of keys, the open door, and this huge collection of antique machinery, didn't know what to do. He rang up his father with a lot of fear in his mind and said, Dad, I have never even rectified a small circuit 
what I will rectify an air conditioning plant. So the father was stepping him up, what else to do, so many miles away. The father pepped him up and this boy had to take this as a challenge because there was no way out if he had to continue in the university. So he started going through the internet sites, started visiting the library of the university, started forcefully building friends who could help him in these electrical circuits. And he went on deeper and deeper into the issue. And three months rolled by. Two and a half months was the stipulated time. It didn't work. Three months rolled by. At the end of three months, one fine morning, this boy with that bunch of keys ran to his professor's room and said, Sir, can you come with me to the warehouse? So the professor was very eager to walk with him, went back to the warehouse. As soon as he opened the warehouse and the two entered, the warehouse was chilled, cold. The air conditioning plant was on, but it had taken three months. So uh, the professor was very glad, patted him again, and immediately took him back to his office, took out a certificate booklet, wrote down the certificate that Tirtho Roy has cleared the first unit of his PhD program with flying colors. He is into the second unit. His exam was over. Three months of examination was nothing but practical hands-on work on an air conditioning plant which made the boy learn the entire basics of the electrical circuits on his own, independently, without a teacher doing that called art integrated learning. That's called, you know, hard work. And today when the boy got the certificate, there was nothing better that could happen to him in his life. And he realized that was an examination he was appearing for in the last three months, which he had planned to prepare after the air conditioning plant would start working. He was cursing himself that I'm going to ready karna hai, mera imtiyan hoga, three months ka unit hai, the unit was over. That's art. Look at the approach. Look at the thought process of the professor. That there's no need for a written exam. You do this and your all circuits are ready. Your base in physics is ready for your topic, doctoral research in the university. So, you know, this is something I really wanted to share with you. Now coming to another incident which I would share with you, another interesting one uh, about this integration process. Uh, I was in class and this, uh, mind you, I have realized that it is art integration today when I look back. When I reflect back, I realize that, yes, that was art integration. I was in uh, the fourth standard, a little girl, and I was in a girl's school. And uh, there was this geography teacher I had. Uh, I'm sorry to say everybody is not the same. My geography teacher was a very stern person, a very, you know, a high disciplinarian and would not smile. Her job was just to deliver a good class and leave the room. She wouldn't say a hello or pat a girl, nothing like that. So she was not very approachable. We were all very apprehensive when she was present in the room. So uh, I remember the day she entered. This day was a different day. And it was very surprising because we never saw her in that form. So she was smiling with a little starry eyes. And we were wondering, ki kya hone wala hai? Pata nahi, kya bolengi? she's smiling. So she smiled and she said, girls, today I will be uh, sharing with you something about vegetables, fruits and flowers grown in different parts of the year. So I was wondering as a student, I clearly remember, I was wondering as a student, what is biology doing in a geography class? That was my, you know, first thing that struck my mind. Ki biology, yaha pe, natural studies, yaha pe, geography class. Mein kya kar rahe? But after a moment, she started dancing very sweetly on her own axis. She started going in circles. We were amazed. So, you know, each one of us was standing at our seats and clapping our hands that ma'am is dancing. And while she rotated on her own axis, she went on moving around the periphery of the class in a circle. And she asked us suddenly, she was wearing a beautiful silk sari, she tucked it in and she asked us suddenly, the girls, can you let me know what I'm trying to show you? And we all screamed, ma'am, you're showing us rotation of the earth and revolution of the earth. And that was the ascendance of seasons. So she wanted to teach us seasons. We got a hang of it the moment we saw her dancing around in that fashion. What was that? Dance, the art form, integrated into the subject geography. And see, the retentivity of that class. Look at the retentivity of that class. So many years down the line, donkeys years down the line. Today on this platform, I remember that incident and I'm sharing it with you. That's the retention of the class. That's the idea you have of the teacher. That's what you remember about the teacher. The best part you remember is this. That's how you make your classes a little uh, interesting. and a little, the, the student wants you. The student, usually, what is attitude? Kya hota hai? Aa gai, chalo baitho, do the class. But the attitude now should be different. Oh, where is she? Why isn't she coming? You know, that's the difference you have to make in the school. 
so that the child wants to meet you. And these are big children. These are adolescents. They are semi-adults. So you have to have channels open for them so that you become very approachable. And through such classes, that, that, you know, that wall, that bridge, the bridge develops, the wall dissolves. That's the beauty of an art integrated class. I will share with you uh, something else. But then before we go into that, traditionally, students are asked to communicate their learning through a report or a test. We all know that. However, when they are involved in such art integration classes, how do you assess them? You might assess his painting. You might assess his oration. You might assess a drama, a skit he has played in the class to demonstrate what he has learned. Showing what he has understood is not wrong in such class. Something called you are helping the child improve on his mistakes, get rid of the mistakes and move on the right track so that there is a very positive atmosphere in the classroom. No one should go home feeling, Everybody should go home with the feeling, I can also do it if he can do it. So that's the difference in the attitude of thinking when you attend such classes. Another incident I would like to share. See, the incidents I'm sharing with you are all focused at one thing, art integration. Another incident I would like to share with you, uh, keeping in mind one aspect, that these art integrated classes have a very beautiful aspect to it. They help you to integrate not only art into the teaching, but also they help you to connect different subjects. It has a very interdisciplinary approach to teaching. Now, how I'm going to tell you, in fact, uh, today's research points to the power of learning through a variety of senses or modalities. Teachers are encouraged to plan instructions that engage students in visual, oral, and kinesthetic learning modalities so that students can actively process what they are learning. Now, how will I explain to you that this mode of teaching also involves a lot of interdisciplinary connections? In my school, every two years, we have a science and art exhibition. It's a biannual exhibition. And I come from a very big school in the sense we have a total strength of around, uh, you know, 10 to 11,000 students. Our total strength of students is around 10 to 11,000. And we have two buildings, one for the juniors, one for the seniors. I'm in the senior building. But in this exhibition, all of us participate together as one institution. So we have participants ranging from the age of three to the age of 18. That is uh, lower infants to class 12. Everybody participates in this art exhibition. And that involves science also. So uh, two years back, uh, this particular team of students from class 12 had selected a topic uh, which is taught in the chapter you're aware of. There's a chapter in NCRT called Microbes in Human Welfare. You're aware of that chapter. And in that chapter, there's a section which talks about the sewage treatment, water sewage treatment. So they chose this topic of sewage treatment for this exhibition. They wanted to put up a working model of the same. And there were six of them who joined the team. And I was the in charge of the senior school a portion of the exhibition. So they came to me, they reported to me, and they started working on it. And every day for around half an hour, I used to go to the room where they were working and I used to observe them. Now, I'm not going to tell you about the model. That's besides the point. I'm going to tell you what I observed amongst the students. It's very interesting. I used to every day go and look at those six people working. And what I noticed was, they, that was a group of girls and boys. I noticed there were two girls in the group who were very focused on, please listen to me very carefully, because something very interesting. There were two girls in the group who were very focused on the theory part of the project. You know, the concrete points, the explanations, what they would use to give an example, which points they would highlight on the chart paper, what they would orally discuss with the, uh, you know, the visitors, how uh, simply would they explain it to a visitor, etc. Et they were interested in the theory part of it. Now, there were two other students in the group. I told you they were a set of six. So two were more focused on the theory. There were two students who were very interested in the art aspect of the project. They were looking into what colors, what sketch pens, what chart papers, what glaze papers, what material for the model. So they were totally inclined towards the art aspect of the project. Two boys were left in the team. It's so interesting. And when I was watching them, I found the two boys left in the team were neither interested in the biological aspect of it, nor interested in the art aspect of it. What were they interested in? How to make a small motor work so that the water jumps from one tank to the other. Physics. They were keen into the physics part of the biology project. Art integration involves interdisciplinary teaching. 
you are doing a biology project, but there are two students who are learning the physics very well out of it. They are trying to make a pump work so that the water moves from one tank to the other. That's the beauty of art. Because see, this project work is a learning process. He is learning how to make those pumps in a biology project so the two subjects are absolutely interlinked. The learning process is absolutely on. Now coming to the next aspect of our discussions, and that is uh, I would like to share with you a video. I would like to share with you a video, which I first, it's very close to my heart. Uh, I find it very interesting because it explains absolutely what I'm trying to discuss and convey, that is integration of arts. The topic which you will feel is being shown is conservation of wildlife, beauty of natural resources. Uh, you can say animal life can be so beautiful, unbelievable. But it has been done by professionals. Students can't do it that well. But then it's uh, not at all a harm or an issue if you enjoy that video for two minutes. You'd love to see this video. At least I loved seeing it. You can enjoy it. So let me just, you know, uh, play the video for you. Just a moment. Yes, I think you can switch off your videos to increase the bandwidth. That would help. Are we ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma Just enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yes, ma'am. We are ready. Can, enjoy can, you see? can you see it? Can you see it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma okay, okay. I'm replaying it. Yes, ma'am. But you can't hear anything. It's not audible, ma'am. Uh, okay, I'll just try it again. Yeah, my system volume is full. Ma'am, while sharing a screen, please share the audio of your laptop. Uh, just, okay, just uh, now let me play, just see if it uh, is audible. Is it audible? No, ma'am. No. No, ma'am, it is not audible. It's not audible. will get left side icon uh, displaying share audio. If you click on that, audio also will be shared, ma'am, along with the video. There is. I'll just check. I'll just check. My system volume is full. Click on audio icon, ma'am. On the left side. There is no audio icon showing here. It shows autoplay, but that is not needed. Ah. Then you can close the entire sharing and you share it again. Can I start sharing again, sir? Yes, ma'am. Now, while sharing, you will see a box right there. You can share the audio okay. as well. See, uh, I have got a window. I'm doing a window. Share entire screen. Share entire screen. Select it and share it. Then I've audio shared, I've sh yes, I've shared the entire screen. And now, will I go off to the window, video window? Yes, ma'am. Let's hope for the best. Can I start now? Should I start? Start. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Is it audible? No, ma'am. It's audible, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. It's audible. It is audible, but not quite clear. Yes, it is audible. I'm very uh, slow. Very <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm restarting it. There's nothing to hear. There's some music in the background. Yeah. Just enjoy the vision. Yeah. 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 Okay. The peacock music. The peacock. Yeah, there's a very soft yeah, music very in the background. Soft music in the background. <laughs> yes. 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 So can right. I start the video? Yes, enjoy the video. The visual is very good. Okay. Okay.
biology learning. And uh, I chose to show a pretty lady who is a local of Assam. Uh, the reason being the Center of Excellence Assam has given me this wonderful opportunity. So uh, I thought of, uh, you know, uh, putting forward the portrait of this pretty lady from Assam who is wearing a piece of art called Mekla. It's a local uh, dress which is worn by the women there called Mekla, traditional dress. And the work which is done on it, there's some embroidery done on it, which is mind-blowing. If you have seen one, you will believe what I'm saying. And it's something very expensive. It is made of pure Muga silk. You need a real fortune to afford one. But I thought this would really put forward what I want to convey. That, you know, art can improve the presentation of the product so well that you will be keen to look at it. So if you integrate art in a biology lesson, the student is going to be with you through the lesson. Now coming to the uh, next slide. Can you now see the next slide? No. No. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yeah, no, ma'am. Ma 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 no, ma no, ma we are not able to see the. Okay, then, then you know what? Okay, okay. That's that's fine. That's fine. Uh, then we will just go in this mode. Now, can you see the second slide? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma then you already start presentation. Yes, sir. Ma'am, press shift plus F5. Now, can you see this slide? No, ma'am. Yeah, something. Yes, now we can see. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma now, tell me something. Just a moment. Just a moment. Now, can you see? The, I'm just switching a slide in the same mode. Tell me whether you can see the next slide. Can you yes, see this slide? Yes, Do in the yes, same way. Yes, 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 now. Okay, yes, yes, so yes, I'll, yes. I'll move in this mode only. Yes, I'll move in this mode. Okay. So, therefore, uh, yeah, thanks a lot. So, uh, the topic of the uh, webinar is integration. Yes. Yes. Slide is not visible. Well, ma'am, it's visible, ma'am. Please it's continue. Visible, it's visible. Oh, it's visible. It's visible. visible. Yes, it's visible. Please yes, continue, continue ma'am. Yeah. Uh, it's visible now. Okay, okay. So, the topic is integration of art in biology for classes 11 and 12. Uh, I wanted to start the webinar with this very interesting aspect called fun curriculum. Now, suppose, let us consider each other to be an English teacher. Okay, let us be English teachers for two minutes. So, if I'm an English teacher, I enter the class and I want to start a class on grammar. How would I start if I'm trying to integrate some kind of art in the class? Uh, I'm interfering in the English arena, but I'm sorry about that. I like this thing, so I wanted to share it with you. Uh, I would start by writing this sentence on the board. I'm reading out this sentence. I do not know where family doctors acquired illegibly perplexing handwriting. Nevertheless, extraordinary pharmaceutical intellectuality, counterbalancing, indecipherability, transdentalizes, intercommunications, incomprehensibleness. It's a beautiful sentence. You have to put in your brains to understand. It's about the bad handwriting of the doctors. But then why I put up this sentence on the board in an English class teaching grammar? Because if you look at the sequence of the words, say, for example, I go to the third word. The third word is not, N-O-T. It has three alphabets. Fourth word, K-N-O-W, no, four alphabets. Sixth word, family. Of uh, Sixth word, doctors. It has, or rather, sorry, family. It has six alphabets. So, you know, the number of alphabets is according to the sequence of the words in the sentence. It's something very interesting for a student who is attending a grammar class in English with you. And this sentence, the child is going to copy it down, keep it with him for the rest of his life, and he will remember you on the basis of this sentence. So that's called fun curriculum. Okay. Now coming to the next slide. Uh, all uh, of us. Yes. 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 Ma'am, kindly, kindly show the second show slide. The, I just. Yeah. It's very innovative. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. The second one. Second one, ma'am. Okay. Second. Please. This. Yeah. I'm starting with the first. This was the first. Then I came to this. Okay. Now I'm coming yes, to the third one. one. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm coming to the third one. This was the third one. Can I go to the fourth? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, right. yes, yes right. ma'am. Uh, we all know who this person is. It is the famous philosopher Aristotle. And he once said, for the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. It's a billion dollar statement by him, which explains exactly what we are working on today. Now, the next slide. Now, this is what are the arts education in schools. Now, when I talk about education of arts in schools, it could be arts as curriculum, arts enhanced curriculum, arts integrated curriculum three types of arts education in schools now art as curriculum if a school has a music art or dance teacher their approach is primarily arts as curriculum students develop knowledge and skills in a particular art form arts enhanced curriculum when the arts are used as a device or strategy 
to support other curriculum areas. For example, students sing alphabets to remember the sequence correctly. So they use music as a device to support learning of the language alphabets. Arts integrated curriculum. Arts become the approach to teaching and the vehicle for learning. Students meet dual learning objectives when they engage in the creative process to explore connections between an art form and another subject area to gain greater understanding in both. Arts integration is larger than an activity. It is an approach to teaching that is embedded in one's daily life. Now coming to the next slide, ma'am. Have a look at it. Read it for yourself. I'm not reading it out for you. Just read it for yourself. It's something very important. Just read it. Can I go to the next slide? Yes. Yes, yes. Ma'am, please wait for a second, please. Uh, sure, 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 sure. Thank you, ma'am. You can go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, look at this slide. It talks about this gentleman, Kolb's experiential learning. Art integrated learning, of course, is based on experience. It has four stages to it. You can feel what you're going to learn. You can watch what you're learning. You can think about what you have learned. You can do what you are learning. So that means the first stage would be a concrete experience. Stage two would be reflecting upon the experience what you have had. The stage three would be conceptualizing what you have about. And four would be active experiential learning cycle, which is absolutely in form with art integrated lessons. Benefits of experiential learning are plenty. Some of the important ones include it builds competency. It results in learning by experience, which is far more effective and long-lasting. Builds ground for self-motivation, exploration. Offers opportunities to students to think freely and operate differently without losing their confidence. Uh, the learning objectives and art forms used normally, uh, the learning objectives would be understanding of arts as pedagogical tool. Uh, the art forms utilized could be visual art forms. I'm talking about biology. They could use painting, photographs, clay modeling, sculpture, craft, and performing arts. You could use uh, theater, you could use storytelling, you could use videos. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, art integrated learning is a pedagogy of experiential learning. The effect and impact of this pedagogy cannot be achieved merely through theoretical instructions. For 100% participation of the learner and quality learning, it has to be a complete hands on practice. The AIL sessions, if you're designing an AIL session, what would you think of? You would think of the lesson which you choose has to be the correct kind so that the art form can be integrated with it. The materials required to achieve the learning objectives should be easily available. These materials should be available in the student's house itself without cost so that it is there in the leftovers or the waste material in the house. They can bring that to the school and do the activity. And the student should be able to operate with those materials easily and achieve what the teacher wants him to learn. So all this is very important as part. Yes. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma'am, your screen is not visible. Is the screen not visible? visible? No, you just start no, the presentation no, because someone interfered in between. So that is what the problem was. Someone started presenting in between. So you all got disconnected. So please okay, start okay. again. Okay. of AIL. Art education is a process that encourages sensory explorations. It provides a platform to work with ideas and materials to create expression. It involves thinking, imagining, exploring, making, experiencing, expressing, verifying, and applying the knowledge. Hence, makes the entire process experiential and holistic in nature. Uh, here, the knowledge is approached in an experimental manner. So, these are something very important about art integrated lessons. How do we assess uh, I have spoken about this interdisciplinary approach in AIL. We have given you an example. The tools and techniques in AIL based assessments, any art activity including uh, drawing, sorry. painting. Yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I can't hear you, ma'am. 
there's a lot of disturbance uh, today there's interrupting uh, would like please mute yourself it's simply creating a clock so ma'am there is a lot of sound in the background you know there's a lot of sound in the background now she is coming if there's too much of sound in the background if somebody is keeping her or himself unmuted so you know that disturbs the class so if you could kindly keep yourself muted okay okay thanks ata thanks ata thank you uh, i'm sharing again right can we see the slide no ma'am portfolios uh, artworks or uh, you know uh, small uh, descriptive uh, messages or some interesting quotes from somewhere pictures of people the scientists who have been involved in those discoveries everything can be used in such classes and now moving on to the next slide uh, this art education can include art forms like dance music theater visual arts students who are into such classes they develop language and vocabulary skills develop problem solving strategies enhance social skills enhance artistic and creative development of the child it develops the motor control and perceptual discrimination of children develops aesthetic awareness this is something very very important it develops the aesthetic awareness and appreciation for the arts the students become more interested in things like uh, you know a visit to a museum a visit to an art gallery they want to see some uh, you know go to a national park see the natural beauty all this becomes interesting to a child instead of wasting time in the mall that's something which is very killing always going to the mall so that will come to an end if such classes are held art education experiences help students feel good about themselves they develop ability to observe and respond they develop the skill creativity and imagination develop understanding of the arts become appreciative develop stronger academic skills across multiple non art subjects uh, another very important aspect of art integrated lessons is that it is a very inclusive lesson now what do i mean by inclusive lesson students are coming from varied backgrounds in a classroom they may have different needs they may come from different educational backgrounds they may have different attention spans and interests they may have different language abilities they may have different cultural backgrounds now if you have to handle such students in a classroom you have to bring them to a focus to a particular lesson it is a tough job and you can do that very well if you have art integrated into your lesson now i'm showing you some uh, paintings this is about a program which is conducted by the government of india for the last one year or so and i am very impressed with this program i loved it it is called ek bharat shreshth bharat program i was uh, i was very amazed with this uh, program and i wonder why they did not have such programs in the past this program was connected and i'm sure you all are aware of it this program connects every state in india with another state so since my school was in west bengal i was connected to the ladakh union territory and we were asked to uh, request our students to do some artwork uh, connected to a particular lesson in your syllabus but with the idea of ladakh so i asked this particular student of class 12 and she went through the details of ladakh online and the chapter we chose was biodiversity and conservation class 12 she painted this as a natural beauty of ladakh and the best point about this was this activity was when she uh, gave me this painting she mentioned to me especially that ma'am i am so impressed with the natural beauty of ladakh that in future i wish to take up photography as a profession because i would love to go to such landscapes and continue uh, you know making good pictures out of it so there you go a student has thought about a profession other than the usual ones and that is exactly what we want the children to do because you need to do what you are uh, best at you don't need to do what your parent wants you to do so therefore that's something very important we have to think of now look at this painting which another student of mine did and this was of the pangong lake of ladakh with the animal in the background that is the ibex this is uh, something like a goat a mountain goat and uh, this animal has been uh, you know poached for a good uh, number of years in this region because the horns are used for making buttons and combs it's an industry out there but the people have not realized that the number of this animal has really dwindled down 
So this particular student, she was so impressed with this animal, the beauty of it, and the environment there, that she want she said she would want to take up conservationism as a profession in future after going through these details of Ladakh online. So you know, this is exactly what a art integrated lesson can do to your thought process. Here, another student of mine, Sakangsha Parui, she made this model of the double hump, which is usually found in the Nubra Valley of the same region. And uh, what I'm interested in is not the model, but I want to tell you how she went about it. Very simply, she made the model overnight. The next morning, she came to me with the model. And she used a leftover cardboard box, which was lying under her father's bed. And she used some sand lying on the roadside near her house to fix it on the base of the box. She painted the sky blue in the, back, uh, in the background. And she made the skeletal network of the animal with used matchsticks and toothpicks, which were there in her house. And she used some leftover cotton wool, which she colored with different shades of brown using tea liquor, chai ka pani, tea liquor. And then she made this model and she brought it to me. So, you know, now, now what happened as a result of this, I enjoyed the way she made it because she discussed it with me. And what she enjoyed was she said she would definitely visit a Ladakh region once in her lifetime because she would love to see these camels in person. So there you go. You have created a new tourist for the Ladakh region, which will help improve the economy of the region. Similarly, this student made this beautiful painting of the Tibetan antelope in the same region. Now coming to this slide. Uh, I love the background of the slide. It shows you an antelope or a bara singha, you may call it, or a reindeer with the hands. Just with the hands and fingers, you're showing this beautiful animal. So experiential learning, art integration is always experiential learning. How does it help? It helps in peer learning, educational environment, student-centered. Students control their learning. Learning experience may be cooperative, collaborative, or independent. Encouraging students to work together. Accelerate learning. Bridges the gap between theory and practice. Produces demonstrable yes. Increases engagement levels. Exceptionally effective for retention. This is something very, very important. Exceptionally effective for retention. Enables personalized learning. Another very, very important point. It's personalized learning. You learn at your pace. You don't have to speed up things. You just go home, think about the activity, redo at home, try and understand what you are trying to learn. Look at this slide. It, uh, it is a mind-blowing slide. With one hand, the person is showing you a football match going on in the field. So two fingers represent one team, two fingers represent another team. There's a ball and the game is on. So you know what art integration can do to a lesson is, uh, you know, so beautiful that a student will be damn attracted, very attracted to your class and would not want to get out of such a class. So it leads to joyful learning. It leads to activity-based learning, fun and games, sport-integrated learning, inquiry-based, collaborative, assessment as learning, learning by doing. I think personally it is one of the finest methods a teacher can adopt. Now, art integration addresses multiple intelligences. And it's people smart visual smart, meat smart, teacher smart, body smart. So it's so smart as far as you as a personality are concerned. And this is exactly what is required for this current smart century. Value of arts integration, it addresses the multiple intelligences, it builds literacy skills, develops the whole child, very, very important, holistic development, engages the community, encourages differentiated instructions, encourages culturally relevant curricula. It develops the 21st century skills, extremely important. Now, why did I say that? Why did I say it develops the 21st century skills? Look, if you go to a job, when a young person goes for a job to an industry, say he's around 25, 26 year old, normally they are asked to express what they want to do to this particular aspect of the company in terms of a project. They, they are told by the boss, by project, bana ke lao PPT dikhao and let me see what you want to say. So that the, the person has to have this training of project-based learning from a young age and that's done in art integration lessons art integrated learning exemplar what kind of exemplar should it be it should promote experiential learning enable opportunities for hands-on experience activity given can be done collaboratively activity given engages students in constructing and demonstrating their understanding and not memorizing should enable students to think critically and innovatively to create something new connect the learner to other disciplines be paired with states or union territories. I gave you the example of Ek Bharat Shresh Bharat pairing. So now coming to the next slide. Now this is a very interesting slide. It is the uh, painting of a coronavirus, but it speaks volumes about the pandemic. See, what it's showing is a, pay, a person who has been infected by the virus and is uh, within the virus painting and is being helped by the frontline workers wearing the PPEs 
trying to drag out the single stranded genetic material that is rna maybe by using the moderna vaccine rna vaccine so that's the whole issue which has been portrayed in the form of a painting so it's an excellent uh, job being done through a painting uh, if you look at this artificial intelligence brain skull vertebral column all being explained to a child now here the most interesting part is you are trying to explain i mean you are dealing with a chapter for class 11 say nervous system and coordination where you are talking about the brain on one side and the software circuits on the other so you are connecting uh, natural intelligence with artificial intelligence so there is again interdisciplinary connections explaining the skeletal system to students through such colorful paintings makes it very easy for them to remember if you look at this painting it talks about a dna spiral then you have the uh, you know uh, the spiral talks about inheritance heredity so you inherit intel intelligence from your parents and then you may use that to develop the software language which is shown through 0101 numbers and then you move on to art and take is masking so the whole thing is in one poster beautiful way of explaining the pandemic situation to students in the classroom poster presentation while teaching classes like animal kingdom to class 11 you can use posters of different animals pin them on the wall and allow a set of students to frame questions on it and have a, a sort of a quiz session and therefore learn the characteristics of different phyla uh suppose you are teaching a nervous system to the class and uh, the first day you have spoken about the parts of a neuron you may ask your students to paint a picture of the neuron and bring it the next day you will find different students approach is different some students give it a real uh, artistic approach beautiful color combinations they may use they may make a collage out of neurons of different types the next day your objective of learning improves you go to a higher objective you talk about the relationship between the neuron and the nervous system the brain the nerves the ganglia and the third day you will find the child is so interested in your class because of these activities he he comes up with a objective for you and that is the relationship between the structural intelligence there you go his interest has been created cartoon as an art form for young adults like you're teaching replication in the class on the basis of inheritance you may show this cartoon talking about the role of the enzymes used topoisomerase normal role you know unwinding of the dna accompanied with helicase so topoisomerase is like the massage man telling the person laying down on the cot to uh, you know relax your backbone and let yourself unwind this kind of a cartoon creates a permanent impression on the student's mind to remember the facts similarly again for replication different uh, uh, role of different uh, enzymes helicase as the unwinder you can see a screw there dna polymerase as the tool man doing lot of jobs together primase the flag hoister initiating the process ligase the uh, connecting man with the glue in his hand so therefore these you know cartoons make a lot of difference while teaching make it very interesting this is a self explanatory cartoon using the uh, the heart condition so be smart don't start smoking uh, drinking etc which is very well explained through this cartoon uh, i will never forget you is the dialogue being delivered by the memory t cell to the pathogen escherichia coli this is actually the job of the memory t cell to remember the pathogen so that the future uh, attacks of the pathogen are minimized taught in the chapter human health and disease class 12 immunology section uh this is another very beautiful cartoon you can use in your uh, lessons say for example while teaching cell division to class 11 the only science where multiplication and division mean the same thing that's biology a similar cartoon for the same chapter uh then we can move on to this cartoon where helicobacter pylori uh, bacterium which is known to cause ulceration uh, is uh, uh, you know stating a statement saying saying stress doesn't cause ulcers i do which is a fact uh, this is a hilarious cartoon while teaching the chapter cell you might use this amoeba hugs are often fatal talking volumes about phagocytosis uh, the corona virus is being studied by the scientists under the microscope the viruses are uh, stating a statement against the scientists saying you might call them scientists but for us they are paparazzi the the you know the uh, press people who run after the hero heroines and make their personal life absolutely unbearable so that's exactly what the viruses are shouting about uh, this is another uh, way of uh, making your class interested through art integration uh, that is uh, you take you know plasticine from the kindergarten section of your school you may ask the 12 or class 11 boys to go to the kindergarten section and collect the plasticine they would love to go back down their memory lane visit the revisit the class and collect the plasticine meet the little ones and come back to their class and make such a model of different parts of the brain this will help them remember it for the rest of their life and it makes the class extremely interesting a similar model can be made using dry fruits and then with the permission of the coordinator you can allow the children to eat it at the end of the lesson makes it very a lot of fun in the class 
uh, making skull caps with different regions of the brain. The students can wear them at the end of the lesson. They, this helps them learn the regions very well. Uh, so uh, suppose you're a teacher. Suppose you're a teacher who has got a transfer. You have left the state and you've. Ma'am, I'm sorry. Place. Can you just go back to previous slide, ma'am? Forty-third one. Forty-third one. Yes. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So suppose you're a teacher who has taken, a, you know, who has uh, had a transfer. You've left the state where you were teaching. You've gone to a new place. You're looking for a job, and uh, you've been called for a job interview by the principal of the institution. And she's asking you that uh, how could you contribute to this uh, particular institution? And your answer is you can correct the scripts well, you can teach well, you can you are a regular person, you won't be absenting. The principal is not interested in these aspects of your personality. So you don't land up with a job. If you had answered that you could make very interesting art integrated activities to keep the students engrossed in the classes, they would never want to miss your classes, you would have had the job immediately. student creativity builds again the 23 skills creativity in communication critical thinking collaboration so here it is the creative process involves imagination exploration creation reflection sharing this is one of my favorite slides 29 ways to stay creative uh, some of the ways are you can make lists you can carry a small uh, diary with you everywhere where you can jot down try free writing quit beating yourself up Get away from the computer, take breaks, uh, sing in the shower, drink coffee, listen to new music, be open, collaborate, get lots of rest, take risk, uh, break rules so that you can give way to new ones, have fun, clean your workplace and so on. These are different ways to make your mind creative. You will be, the moment you feel you are at rest, new ideas come up. So that's the whole idea. How to design an arts integrated lesson, I've already talked about it. And the most important essence of these lessons is Project-based learning. That's something very important. Let me mention one thing here. I have some students who are now currently attending classes in the central institutes. These are not students who are becoming doctors and engineers. They have taken up general stream courses in the central institutes. One of them being Tata Institute of Fundamental Sciences, which has a campus in Assam itself in Guwahati, if I'm not mistaken. That's the TIS. And these students who have attended classes in TIS have shared with me, they said, ma'am, it's a totally different way of teaching in these institutes. Mind you, they are central institutes. So what they teach is, the first day the student of mine visited their class, uh, he is a very quiet person. But now when I meet him, he talks so much that you you know you need to stop him. So how was this massive change in him? He said, ma'am, when I went to this institute, the first thing they told me is, make a project on this, this topic and come and debate it out to prove your point. Now, he never spoke. He was a quiet man. So if he didn't debate, how would he clear the exam? The exam was debating. So, you know, this is the kind of art integration which is necessary for upliftment of the personality of the students. A model made in my school in one of the exhibitions, uh, the focus was on human evolution. This is the Neanderthal. The material used is all free of cost. No money was spent. The stand on which the model was made was contributed by one student's father who owns a boutique. The loin cloth was a torn gunny bag. The body was made of newspaper, the paint. And the stick was broken from a tree on the roadside. The hair was collected from the thrown hair in a saloon, which was then sanitized and washed. And uh, therefore, the Neanderthal was created. And while doing so, the students went through the details of the lifestyle of Neanderthals and different intermediary evolutionary stages of man. So there you go. They have learned the evolution of man and they have made this model. Here they have made some models of cyborgs, which is the next level of uh, a, a class on neural control and coordination. Uh, this is a model of uh, the dinosaur they have made, which focuses on mass extinctions and evolution. Uh, these were the models of some theoretical um, hybrids they made, uh, a hybrid between elephant and butterfly. These are theoretical hybrids, zebra and uh, a horse. Uh, then you have the, the partridge and the peacock. So uh, the, the scorpion and a snake, which you know creates a lot of interest among students to understand the mutations, the uh, heredity aspect of the syllabus. Uh, collage making can also make your classes very interesting. Uh, this was a model of a national park. Believe me how they made it. You can feel as though it's a very gigantic model because you feel there's a depth in the entire screen. You know, you feel you can walk miles through the screen. Actually, what they did was they fixed a, a painting on the wall with a river. And this river was connected with a model of a river made in a small space on a sand tray. So it gave it a beautiful three-dimensional feel and a giganticity of a national park. Therefore, Experiential learning involves 
concrete experience, reflective observation, abstract conceptualization, active experimentation. Uh, this is a pop art I have given here with this beautiful color combination just to let you know that students through art integrated lessons just not learn the subject you are focusing on but they also develop taste for other subjects which they may choose as professions later on. Maybe they go for dress designing, interior decoration, hotel management where they require to have this sense of color combinations, beauty etc. So approach to teaching, uh, the checklist for art integration includes approach to teaching, understanding, art form used, creative process, connect, evolving objectives, and acts as an energizer. Art integrated lessons have a beautiful impact on the biology department also. The atmosphere becomes more positive, more cohesive, more student-centric, staff collegiality increases, arts make lesson content more accessible by students, arts encourage joyful learning, help students make personal connections to the content, help stimulate higher level thinking, help struggling learners of the de department to also be successful. This is very, very, very important. Please mute yourself, Preeti ma'am. Sorry ma'am. Arts help stimulate higher level thinking. Now something very important I was trying to tell you is that uh, it helps the students make personal connections to the content and the, you know, the struggling learners of the department, they also get interested in the lesson. This is something very important. Because there are students in the class who are backbenchers who are not very keen on biology. But when they see you doing some activity, they are very interested in the activity only. So, you know, unknowingly, they start learning the lesson. Arts help bio students retain information because it involves visual or kinesthetic modalities. Help creative critical thinking, persistence, positive behavior, self-awareness, self-confidence. Now, this is a very interesting model made by some of the students. The lungs showing the effect of pollution with the industry inside the lungs. So you can use this while teaching respiration, the chapter on human respiration in class 11. Working model of the excretory system of man using two bottles as the kidneys releasing the water, the, the urine content, simulated urine, with a cutout of uh, the kidney in the background, a very beautiful way of showing the working model. Three-dimensional model of the animal cell. Excuse me, can yes. you just share lungs yes. model once again? Now, coming to this one, a very interesting slide which shows you the positions of the different bones in the human skeleton with the spellings, the names of each bone written in the position. So, if you want the children to remember, let them see this. They will just take a you know picture of this or they'll copy this and this would be the best way to remember where each bone is located. Same for the muscles. Location of the muscles through this diagram would be extremely helpful because the spelling of the muscles, the name of the muscle is in the position of the muscle. You want them to understand electrocardiogram while explaining body fluids and circulation. You can ask a friend of yours who is a doctor to send you real ECGs which you can put up in the class and show them the normal heartbeat, fast heartbeat, slow heartbeat, irregular heartbeat. So, you know, they find it very interesting and the photographic memory persists. Uh, this chart can be used to explain taxonomic hierarchy while teaching taxonomy, while teaching animal kingdom. Shadow art to help them recognize different animals belonging to different phyla in class 11. Uh, I have uh, designed two games for you. You can uh, take a picture of this. Uh, it's a game based on asexual reproduction in class 12. Teaching of <coughs> reproduction in organisms, class 12. You can take a picture of this. And this is another slide, uh, which is a game on animal kingdom, class 11. You can use this to make your classes interesting. Kindly mute yourself, please. Okay, now coming to the learning outcome. Teaching through the arts can present difficult concepts visually, making them more easy to understand. Art instruction helps children with the development of motor skills, language, social skills, decision making, risk taking in inventiveness. Visual arts teach learners about color, layout, perspective, balance, all techniques that are necessary in visual, digital, academic work, more so, uh, you know, this uh, project based learning. Arts reach students. This is something very important. Arts reach students who are not otherwise being reached and that the arts reach students in ways that they are other not being. Students usually explain by disengaged students and finding that arts provide students a reason and a motivation for being engaged with school and thus preventing students from dropping out of school. Engagement in arts enhances self-awareness, confidence, trust and empowerment. You know, your attitude becomes, I can't do it, I can do it. Creating art is a personal experience and involves students' personal resources, implicating a greater involvement and investment in a work 
without right or wrong answers. Personal investment nourishes self learning and encourages the learning experience itself rather than learning as a means of test score performance. The confidence, collaboration, creativity that arts education fosters has a circular positive effect on academics as well as cultural engagement. But at the end, it is, of course, your perspective, right? You may be an optimist, pessimist, or otherwise. And before I end, I would just like to share these few words with you that in this entire talk of mine, where I tried to share something with you, was I looking for an artist? Not at all. I was looking for somebody who could think out of the box to find out how a student views the subject. In the 21st century, the most important asset is quality human resource. Art integration helps in students approaching a problem with their own perspective. Different students will look at a problem from a different point of view. This creative way of thinking leads to newer ideas which lead to positive change. This change is a constant. For a society to prosper, you need change. Status quo leads to stagnation and finally death of society and culture. This is the reason why in the last 500 years, the West has surged ahead in practically all fields, whether science, technology, philosophy, architecture, etc. The proof is Nobel laureates come from Western universities because they are given the freedom of thinking out of the box and challenge existing rules. In India, we are taught from a young age to accept whatever our elders tell us. This stifles creativity. Thank you so much for being so patient. And now I think it's time to spoil each other. Excuse me, Excuse me. Yes. Yes. Ma'am, I would like to ask a question. That one I think I would, uh, one minute, one minute, one minute. I, I would like to see you, ma'am, if you don't mind. So that makes it interesting. And I think all of us can switch on our videos now. Because otherwise we feel we are talking to dead walls. I think we can switch on our videos. I hope I didn't go through. Yes. yes. Ma'am, I'm sorry to interrupt, but my webcam is not working, ma'am. It's all right. It's all right, ma'am. I just want a few of you to be with me. Otherwise, I feel so lonely and, you know, cornered. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes, jo uh, Jyoti ma'am wanted to ask me something. Who uh, wanted to ask me? Somebody wanted to ask me something. Uh, uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, one you told about and I can't hear. in good teaching, but you said the interviewer is asking uh, something different out of the box, and you uh, told us 